I'd just like to read for you the message of Our Lady from the 25th of February, just the other day. Dear children, I am with you and we pray together. Help me with prayer. Little children, that Satan may not prevail. His power of death, hatred and fear has visited the earth. Therefore, little children, return to God and to prayer, to fasting and renunciation for all those who are downtrodden, poor and have no voice in this world without God. Little children, if you do not return to God and his commandments, you do not have a future. That is why he sent me to you to guide you. Thank you for having responded to my call. Over the last week, we have seen again the power of Satan at work in the world. We have seen that power, especially in the actions of Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia. We have seen how he is prepared to destroy, to kill, to do anything to achieve whatever is his aim. And surely there we see the power of evil at work. We have already seen the power of evil at work in the fear that has gripped the world over these past few years. A fear that in many ways was much worse than the pandemic that we were shielding from. And that caused many things to happen that were very serious. It caused the churches all over the world to be closed. And as we found out here in Scotland, from the courts. The government had no power or no authority to do that. But surely that was the work of Satan, trying to gather people and to make them suffer from spiritual anorexia, deprived of the bread of life, deprived of the food of life. We have seen the power of Satan at work in the death of so many innocent people. And you know, one of the things Our Lady has always said is that we must look into our own heart and there we must begin conversion. Our Lady doesn't ask for the whole world to be converted. She asks for each individual person to turn to God and to pray with her. And so tonight, Our Lady is praying with us She's praying with us for our own intentions, for peace in Ukraine, and for our own hearts to be open to her son. If we look at the past 40, almost 41 years now, since Our Lady first appeared, she said then, and she continues to say, that God has sent her, sent her into the world because this is a particularly difficult time, a time when the world faces a very uncertain future. And it's a time of tremendous grace. It's a time of tremendous grace, an opportunity to turn away from sin and to turn to God. And what I'm going to say tonight might affect people that might feel threatened but remember that God is waiting to welcome us to have our sins forgiven. And as I said yesterday from this very place, as we look at the destruction of life in Ukraine, and we see the tanks rolling in, even swerving to deliberately drive over a car, we see young children been injured, lying in hospital beds. We see all kinds of destruction. And we are shocked. We are shocked that that can happen in Europe in this century, at this time. And yet, why should we be shocked? Why should we be shocked? 
between our own country and the countries of Western, the Western world when they have legalised the killing of innocent lives, when they have legalised the terrible killing through abortion, where it is not tanks which destroy children, but medics who are sent and who have studied to protect life. And as Mother Teresa said, how can any country be blessed that allows abortion? So this would be an opportunity now for anyone that's listening to me tonight to think, what am I doing to promote life? What am I doing to counteract the terrible darkness of abortion and euthanasia? My own native country changed the laws there by a referendum, I'm sad to say. So if there's anybody tonight who is listening to me who has had an abortion or who has encouraged anyone to have one or disgusted in a negative way with anybody, please bring that sin to the Lord because the Lord wants to forgive you and that sin is in our hearts if we have committed it, if we have encouraged others to abort or if we have taken part in an abortion of any way. God is waiting and wanting to forgive us. Over the past 40 years since the apparitions began, we have had some very strong leaders. I think of St. John Paul II. I think of the great love he had for life. He instituted the mysteries of, of light, the luminous mysteries, to counteract the culture of death in the world. I think of Pope Benedict, who continuously upheld the dignity and the beauty of life. And of course, St. Teresa of Calcutta, who spoke so often about how precious life is. I think also, particularly, of the greatest voice of all, the voice of the Mother of God calling us to respect life. So when we look at Putin and what he is doing, we must also look into the mirror and ask ourselves, what am I doing to promote life? Our Lady tells us that Satan is very strong and that he's, he's already visited the world and his power of death, hatred and fear is on the earth. Well, that's very easy to see. As I say, he managed to get all the churches in the world closed to stop people coming to be nourished in word and in sacrament. He continues to attack the church in every way, to attack the people of God and the word of God. And we see through his actions throughout the world the many terrible outrages that are inflicted on images of Our Lady and on images of Christ. Churches desecrated. This is the work of Satan, infiltrating into the lives of people. And we must be on our guard and be a people of prayer, a people who really take the words of Our Lady seriously. We know that death, as I say, has entered the world. We also see the way Satan has destroyed family life and the whole idea of marriage being redefined. That is not the work of God. That is the work of Satan. And we must uphold the sanctity and the dignity of, of marriage as proclaimed by God. Male and female, he created them. That is why a man must leave father and mother and cling to his wife. We must be a voice for the downtrodden, for those who have no voice of their own. And again, who is more voiceless than the innocent child in the womb? 
And this is a very interesting line. If you do not return to God and his commandments, if you do not return to God and his commandments, you do not have a future. You know, by many people, the commandments are seen as something that's totally outdated, something from the dark ages. This is 2022. We are an, an enlightened people. Surely we don't have to leave all this rubbish. Of course, it's not rubbish. It is the word of God. And it is the word on which we will be judged when we meet our God. The commandments are real. And so, before we go to confession, do we ever stop and really go through the commandments with, uh, with the Spirit helping us and ask ourselves, have I sinned against any of those commandments? Because, of course, many of the abortions that take place today can go back further to the sin, sin of adultery or fornication, where now, in many cases, abortion is seen as a form of birth control. So as we look into the matter tonight, and as you ladies look into the matter tonight, you'll see how wonderful you look. And the gentlemen, well, they don't need to look into the mirror because you know how wonderful you look. But as we look in tonight, let us really look and ask ourselves, as we point the finger at Putin, what are the three fingers pointing back in our own life saying to us? Because Our Lady is with us. And whatever changes we need to make in our life to walk hand in hand with Christ in the state of grace will be ours. The graces will be ours if we put ask for them. Our Lady is always pointing us to Jesus. She hasn't come to Medjugorje for her own glory. She has come because the Father has sent her, has sent her to call us back to her Son. As I always say, she always points us to her son. You know, I know I've used this many times in my last parish. When I take off my glasses, you all look wonderful. <laughs> when I put on my glasses, I can see all the wrinkles. And I can see the areas in maybe ladies' heads that need to be touched up a wee bit at the roots. I can see all these things. But that's what Our Lady does. She is the magnifying glass which points us to Jesus. So don't be afraid to sit down with her or kneel down with her and ask her for all the graces that we need. I'll just finish by again reading the message and remembering that Pope Benedict said that we're living at a time of relativism, where people think, well, if something is good, if it feels good, then it can't be sinful. Of course it can. Dear children, I am with you and we pray together. Help me with prayer, little children, that Satan may not prevail. His power of death, hatred and fear has visited the earth. Therefore, little children, return to God and to prayer, to fasting and renunciation. For all those who are downtrodden, poor, and have no voice in this world, a world that is without God. Little children, if you do not return to God and his commandments, you do not have a future. That is why he sent me to you to guide you. Thank you for having responded to my call. And of course, Wednesday of this week is a day of prayer and fasting for the Ukraine.